Welcome to the world headquarters of the Mass Preacher, broadcasting from somewhere <clears throat> partially underground on this continent. Um, <clears throat> I'm wearing glasses tonight, <clears throat> not because I need them, but um, when I was growing up, we were taught you don't hit a guy with glasses. So <clears throat> I'm going to be talking about something that is. Um, <clears throat> sacred cow, and it's the topic of, of tithing. When <clears throat> I became a Christian and came to church, uh, got saved in an altar call, and <clears throat> they handed me a Bible, <laughs> I don't think I can wear these things, so... <laughs> but... <laughs> it's hard to preach with those things on. <laughs> Just remember I started the sermon with them. <clears throat> we were taught a few things. And it was just part of no organized program, but it's just when you went to church there, this is kind of what you were taught. <clears throat> you, you'd get a paycheck, and you'd give them 10%. This is a topic of tithing. Um, you go to church all the time, and, and the doors are open, and... <clears throat> always pass out tracts and a few other things. But this was one of those topics we were always taught. If you go on YouTube, there's a lot of <clears throat> teachings for and against uh, this, this process of tithing. So I'm just throwing another log on the fire. And um, so for whatever it's worth to you. And for my pastor friends, if I come to your church and seek your ministry, you have an understanding of where, how I live and what I believe. The good place to start is to take an exhaustive concordance of the Bible. Uh, look up every time the word tithe, tithes, tithing occurs in the Bible. And I got this little chart here that I did. Wrote down all the verses. I looked up every verse, and then you can have a chart of what were they tithing when they did that. I did it in under an hour, but I you know if you're real slow, it might take you two or three hours. But it would be well worth your effort to see what the entire Word of God says on the topic of tithing in this little chart. One of the dilemmas <clears throat> with talking about this is a husband asks a wife, what did you put in the stew? And what he was saying was, well, I like the stew, but I want to know what you put in it. What she heard was, you jerk, you make your own dinner if you don't like it. That's what she heard. So the, there's a dilemma, is what I say and what people hear. So when I say I don't believe in tithing, what people hear is saying, oh, how do you support the church? How do we pay for our buildings? How do we pay for a heat? How do we pay for our missionaries? How do we pay for our salaries? That's what they hear. So... Where do we go with this? A famous verse, <clears throat> Malachi 3.10. You know, will a man rob God, yet you, you rob me in your tithes and offerings. So, what we have in the church today, in, in so many circles is, okay, you get your paycheck, you parse out 10% of it and give it to the church that you attend. That's not a bad thing. If you want to give 20%, if you want to give 30%, I have been places where I have given 50%. There's times I've given 100% of my check. And there's times where I didn't give the hoses a penny. Now, if you go through 
and follow all the verses on tithing. There was times when there was an additional tithe. There was times to add 5%. And you work all that out, and it's kind of a complicated formula. So we have taken it, let's make it simple, we'll not use certain verses in the Old Testament, and we'll use certain verses and present that. I've heard the argument, well, tithing was before um, the law. Well, animal sacrifice was before the law, but we don't do that. Probably the simplest thing is <clears throat> a statement that all of what was done by the believers before Christ and the way that God had set for people to, to worship and believe was processed through, filtered through the cross. And whatever comes out is what we still retain today. And I think it's an interesting uh, statement, and I think it's a true statement. In the book of Acts, in 1520. It's the first church council. Now let's read that. Acts 1520. And there was a lot of debate and it was some heated opinions. But that we write unto them that they abstain from pollutions of idols and from fornication and from things strangled and from blood. At the First Church Council, there was a debate of racism. And in this racism, there were people who didn't believe that pe Gentiles could be Christians. And almost ended the church before it started. It was a really big deal. The great, bold Peter, when the boys from Jerusalem came, he lied about having ham sandwiches, if you read the book of Galatians first couple chapters, and Paul rebukes him. So at this church council, okay, this is the minimum where we can go for the Gentiles. Tithing is not included in this. So, let's go to 2 Corinthians 9. And when you try to get all the tithing verses in the Old Testament, the extra 5%, other times with there's another 10%, it gets really weird. And so let, let's read in 2 Corinthians 9, 6 through 7. But I say, he which soweth sparingly shall also reap sparingly. And he that soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man according as he purposes in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly, or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. There is nowhere in the New Testament where you see where they specifically recorded they gave 10%. Here, Paul writes, what is the principle? You sow sparingly. You know, you put in two kernels of corn. It's not going to get back very much corn. You go down the street, <coughs> get a big lot, put in a million kernels of corn. I know somebody in another country, and they, they planted bell peppers. And... <coughs> And they didn't really realize, only been there a year or two, <clears throat> that um, how many they planted, the bell peppers are going to take over. And because this individual put in a lot of bell peppers, a lot of bell peppers came out. <clears throat> so, the practical level of tithing. If I just started attending a church now and and I'll be giving and if they 
want to stick to that 10%? I'll probably give 10%. They're, they're nice people. A lot of like a lot of things, what they're doing, they, they had a program that I feel like I want to be a part of financially that I just heard, learned about this last week. So, and that's a good figure. But what I'm against is the legalistic way that people have a baseball bat and that, that God is like Darth Vader who's going to whack them on the head if they don't give him 10%. And I've seen churches I give 10% to do, you know, hose me because they don't feel responsibility to the people. They think they're a government agency and they could just waste that money. I heard one a Bible scholar talk about <clears throat> letting the sweat come when you, before you give it. In other words, holding on to it, understanding what you're doing and giving that money. And that's why there's been some ministries I've given a whole paychecks because I desperately believe in what they were doing. I could never do what they were doing. But I wanted to be a part of it. So it's not a matter of not giving or giving. And then with, you know, some of the <clears throat> churches today, each individual situation that arises. I have a right to say, you know, I just can't be on board with that. Place has a really nice building. They decide they want some more real estate and they begin hitting the tithe button and giving button and really pushing it hard. Um, money is a really big deal. <clears throat> and there's an aspect of a spirit of mammon where people are stingy and we don't want that. We want to be liberated from it, but we also don't want to be taken advantage of. 95 Thesis of Martin Luther that um, whoever speaks about experiences or indulgences more than the word does the word a disservice. And that part of the Reformation was about money, of how money was used and abused and poor people took the blunt of it. So Every man as he wills in his heart. Um, as he purposes in his heart is the standard for giving. <clears throat> what I would recommend to new believers coming to a church, if I was bringing a new believer there, look around, see what you want to be involved in. And I don't think it's either, it's a all or nothing um, arrangement. I think you know, you might go to a church and you say, okay, this program that they're doing, they're building a, a, a mission, a building in another country. I am I'm totally on board with that. There was a church, um, a lady missionary in a country, let alone being an American, just being female by herself, a missionary in this country. And there was a fundraising for a satellite phone and I know in that church <clears throat> there were millionaires in this church and they hadn't raised a penny for this and he had to go by a certain time to set up the satellite disk and with the satellite phone she literally could go anywhere in the world. That's 10,000 bucks back 20 years ago. I thought that was a great investment for this woman to communicate. She could, she could fax. I mean it was just this was just a tool she really needed to communicate with the outside world. I thought this was fantastic. So I pulled money out of some of my bills, just rejuggled some things, and gave a large pay, a large check to this cause. Now there are some other things that this church did. I wouldn't give them a penny for doing. But on this particular thing, this is a great thing in my mind. And you have to believe in what they're doing. Now, there is a philosophy out there, well, brother, God will bless you. Just give me all your money and don't worry about it. And even if I'm a crook, God's going to bless you. Well, somehow, 
I don't know, that just doesn't add up to me. But you need to have the vision of the place. And then when something like this comes up, now they did this, this satellite phone for this missionary. They finally did scrape together the money. I was disappointed. I, I'm the first one to begin the, the thing for it. And there's some odd things in my life that I've, um, I've given money to. And that's what this whole thing is about. There was an event, a gentleman speaking at a conference, I think it was Oxford. And he was going to be the main speaker. And um, he was going to give a lecture. And it wasn't exactly the you know, typical evangelical preaching the Bible type thing. But I gave him. I was one of the first ones. I just, you know what, I just really believe God wants you to go over there and do this. And I gave him a very large sum of money and, um, to do this. And we fall into a trap of like paying our taxes. So we close our eyes, we, the government does whatever they want, they hose us every which direction, and we have to give them the money. And that's the attitude that the church has taken. As an individual, we need to stop that. And you have the power to do that. You have the right to say, you know, I don't believe in what you're doing here. Now, if you do B, then I'll give you the money. If you do X, I'm not giving you the money. And that's how we need to cut it up. And if you want to give 10% every week, God bless you. If you want to give 20% of your paycheck every week. But it's the attitude of the heart. I was at a, a conference and um, I was there. A guy walked up from the conference and he wanted to buy my lunch. Had a bad feeling about it, and, you know. So he threw down a 20, you know. And so I, I bought a lunch for somebody else and, and I left a big tip and, you know, went back to the conference and he got a reward for you know, being one of the biggest givers at the church. And he was doing it more of like playing the stock market instead of from the heart. And Jesus talked about doing things from the heart. If you read the Sermon on the Mount, uh, the Beatitudes, talking about the heart. And that is where it's hard to get people to operate from the heart, from the spiritual man, on why we give and who we give to. And it's not a sin to tithe. It's just, I resist and I declare against people who say that if you don't parse me your check, 10% of my, your check to me every week, you're of the devil and going to go to hell. I resent that. I don't believe that. But I do believe is a responsibility. And some cause comes along, like with this story I told you about with the satellite phone. You need to jump on it, man, and get the thing done for God. At the end of the day, when we stand at the bema seat of Christ, we're going to be judged for our works. Paul says if they're wood, hay, or stubble, they'll be burnt. If they're gold or silver, they'll be purified. So we need to give with a good heart, not like we're trying to make a scam. And then churches appoint people who are big givers. I know a number of churches have elders, and I'm sorry, they got the job because of their paycheck. If you study the Reformation, people bought positions in the church. And pastors, look, we got bills, this guy's giving money. I'm going to make him a leader. I'll make him associate pastor and elder because of his pocketbook. Can't preach his way out of a wet paper sack, but I'm going to, because of the money. And when you deal with this money, it's almost like the Lord of the Rings. The ring just freaks everybody out. Very few people can handle it. And to, to me... That's what the issue is about. Whether you give 10% or not is not the issue. 
The issue is our heart. The issue is the heart of the church, which is taking the money. Do they have a heart for doing good things? There are some churches that have pastors, really neat people. Support them. Take care of them. That's great. Some people have pastors at churches that are hosers. <laughs> I wouldn't give them a I wouldn't give them a penny. I'm sorry, I wouldn't. My pastor friends are watching this. <laughs> But, um, and there are people who are really good men of God and deserve every penny. And there's some that you give them 50 cents, they're overpaid. But this is part of what we have to do. And we have a choice in this. This is presented like, okay, it's all or nothing. And I, I don't believe that. And if you go off, you know, want to do some hoser thing or support some some ministry that's very questionable, to say the least, I'm not going to give you money to do that. If you support someone, I really believe it instantly. Like this last weekend, as I was watching the video presentation from this overseas mission, boom, the Holy Spirit quickened my spirit. This is good. This is good stuff. Plant some seed. Get hands full of seed and begin tossing seed at this thing. Great. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. And there's other times where the Holy Spirit speaks to me. This is a hoser. And so we need to make this personally responsible. But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly. He that soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man according as he purposeth in his heart, so let him give not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. As you purpose in your heart, give. And pastors, leave people alone. Stop beating people over the head with a baseball bat for an exact period number which you cannot prove because you do not do the extra tithes that the New Testament has. And if you don't do one part, you offend in all. So, it's really a needless argument. This is, this is not uh, something to argue about. But this is something to be personally responsible. Pastors, be thoughtful before you spend people's money. I was at a, invited by a friend who was appointed to a board that was some sort of overseeing group. And so... The pastor of this church was looking for money to, um, to give for this accountability group. And it was a large sum of money. And they met once a month for breakfast. And it's like, where do they go for breakfast, you know? You could go down to the um, coffee shop and get a couple of donuts for a few bucks. You don't need this much money. And I, I'm just sitting there watching, and this individual I knew was asking these questions as he's this board he was appointed of that's supposed to be a accountability. Dude, you don't need that much money for that. And when you see about people who won't ride in certain kind of cars because they have to have a luxury car, my God, where have we come? Where, where are we at? And so, I contend, in closing, if you give to one of these hosers who says, I won't set my foot in a brand new so-and-so car, I must have a luxury car. You give 50 bucks to that guy, and when you stand in the Bema Sea, and that judgment, the pureness, the fire of God that will consume unrighteousness, and you give that 50 bucks because you thought, you know, this is what you should do. I just wonder if that's going to burn in the fire as wood, hay, or stubble as you're paying for his luxury car. And America is rampant with abuses. But there's jewels, too, of people being helped. You might be visiting a church and it may not be your group of people. I used to support some people. They're not, in, they're not Pentecostal. 
Um, there's several groups that are not Pentecostal. But what they were doing in other parts of the world were truly first century missionary journeys. And yeah, I have some theological differences with them. I gave them big sums of money because of the work establishing a school and a, and a hospital in places where you're lucky to be alive. I gave money to a group that was secular. It was doctors that would go to a, another land and developing a relationship with one of these doctors. And yeah, they're not preaching the gospel, but they're helping Christians in horrible parts of the world, horrible war going on. They're helping Christians in a real practical way. And my heart went out to these people. And that is what this whole thing, and we've coined this phrase tithing, and we play all these silly games, and you give 9.5%, we're going to kick you out of the church and lose your membership, and crazy stuff we play, games we play. And so I've come to a point, after being in this thing, the church, for over four decades, that this is what, how I'm going to live my life. And you must present yourself if you are asking for money, and if th this church that's, you know, I like and I'm planning in my head what I'm going to do financially as a part of this church. I've only been going there a short time. I want to know a little bit more about them, and I haven't given them anything yet, but I plan to, and I'm sorting out a strategy in my mind. It's not like, oh, I got this 10% thing, it's... It's like the, the ring in the Lord of the Rings. It's going to get me. It's going to get me. If I don't give it up, I'm going to give it. You know, let's grow up in Christ. Let's take authority. Let's be bold and be mature believers in Christ. In these money games, this superstition like the Reformation. Why Luther wrote a 95 Thesis. Because it's superstition that people would give. Thinking some superstitious thing would happen when they got God's word about the reality of giving. And sometimes it doesn't come back in this life. If you read Hebrews 11, about some not receiving the promise. And there may be those who give. There are those who give who um, won't see the fruit of everything they give. So let's, let's get this thing straight. Let's stop playing games and putting schemes and scams on people. And... People who give, looking at it like the stock market. People who give, looking to buy a position that they're not called for. Let's figure this thing out. And what my hope is, is that the individual in the church, you would hear this teaching and say, you know what, that makes sense. And you would begin to stand and say, you know what, um, I can support X, I can't su support Z. And you may love that church, you may have friends. I mean, most people go to church for so socialization. I mean, if you think about it. And no one, I don't know anybody except for clowns like me that go in looking for a doctrinal statement. I don't know anybody that picks a church that way. Well, it feels good and nice. So, okay, do that. But, you know... Figure this thing out. Decide. Look through, okay? I'm going to help here, but I'm not going to help here. And I'll say, you know, excuse me. I don't believe in what you're doing here, but you're doing over here. I, I can do. And that way, we're empowered individually as a person for personal responsibility. And whether you do what I suggest or not, if you just do the old-fashioned, you know, you know, like, like, you're, you're a slave to these people and you can't say boo about where they spend the money and these hosers are doing the most bizarre things with the money and you don't have any say in it, that's not right. That's not true. That's not what, as a man, purpose in his heart is what the great apostle Paul said. Well, rambling on. So, I'm putting on my glasses so my pastor friends who are mad at me for what I said you can't hit a man with glasses. Lord, I just pray for everyone here in this message. And I'm not saying don't give. I am saying be responsible for how you give. Lord, let each person who hears this, Lord, just decide within themselves, Lord, and have a burden 
and take on causes for that they believe in, Lord. In Jesus' name. Signing off from somewhere partially underground with his glasses on, mass preacher vigil good night.